And welcome back to the Hotline. We're talking again, one of the more exciting qualifying sessions of the season. Paul could have been one of five or six people. It was very, very impressive. It was very, very exciting. Speak to you in a second. And welcome back. So let's just have a quick rundown of the grid before we talk about the individual performances and any significant news coming out. So congratulations, Orlando of the Norris. Congratulations, McLaren. It needed a perfect lap for a perfect pole. That's pretty much what it, what it was. Norris explained it as a perfect lap. He grabs that pole position by the narrowest of margins. Not as close, though as Canada was with George Russell and Verstappen, but Verstappen loses out again, but only just. I mean, we are talking just, you know, like a metre breaking, a tiny snap of oversteer being the difference. And these two were almost pretty much in a league of their own come Q3. And it was Lewis Hamilton finally getting one up all by a couple of thousandths on George Russell, who's fourth. So it's a mess, all at Mercedes second row. We've got an all Ferrari um, third row, disappointing really coming into the weekend you thought they're out they're out for pole beginning qualifying you thought they're out for pole then when q2 hit they started to struggle so it's the clarence size in fifth and sixth well done to alpine gasly well done perez he was never going to get that high they kind of used him didn't they for him they used perez um, to help max and ock on ninth two alpines into that top 10 and piastri yeah so Daisy Oscar is all, all I can say. He was looking like a really solid lap, and then he uh, strolled or perished it, whatever, you, or sergeanted it. Um, ah, uh, I felt sorry for, for for Piastri. I know we we expected better. We'll get into get him. We'll get into it in a bit. And then we have Alonso, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Zhao, and the last lot are Magnussen, Sonoda. This one, Ricardo, Albon, and Sargent. So. Sonoda and Ricardo separated by, le I think, less than a tenth. Disappointing. Uh, not really that good at all, if I'm honest. I was kind of a bit upset. I, I expected better. If you remember, in, in our preview show, RB, RB were going to have the, the good car. They're going to have this go faster bit on the car. And it, the, well, let's just say that materialised, but the go faster bit never really materialized at all it's just not gonna it's just not very good so as you know norris grabbed pole it's his it's his second career pole position following sochi in 2021 norris took pole by uh what is it yeah 0 0.020 seconds verstappen was second but he's won the last four times he has started second on the grid that obviously includes canada last time so yeah don't rule him out. Rule him out at your peril. 30 of the last 33 races here have been won from the front row. Max Verstappen number is also 33. Just saying. Um, Lewis Hamilton has grabbed third. That's his first top six start, believe it or not. Top six start for a Grand Prix this season. And his best start in Spain since he won here from pole position in 2021. Um, George Russell was out qualified by his teammate for a Grand Prix for just the second time this season. Leclerc was fifth as he out qualified teammate um, Sainz. But he out qualified Sainz. And that is for the sixth consecutive race. So well done, Charles. In a day of tight margin, Sainz was only 0 0.035 seconds away from third, which was Hamilton. And Pierre Gasly ba is bagging his best start for Alpine with seventh. Perez made Q3 for the first time since Miami. For the first time since Miami. So let that sink in. The best car, first time since Miami. Espan Akon was ninth. His finish, uh, his first top 10 since Austin. 14. That's almost like a season, isn't it? An old school 90 season, 14 races ago. Piastri didn't set a time. Alonso is P11 as you missed uh, um, Q3 at home so and that's only the third time his career he's missed out on that. Bottas ended a four race streak of Q1 eliminations today. Well done, Bottas. Qualifying in 12th. Hulkenberg was P13 with a very average qualifying position of the year being 13.1. Yeah, at least he's consistent. Stroll qualified 14th and has been out qualified 6 to 4 by his teammate this season. Uh, okay. And Zhao managed his best qualifying of the year, P15, as he made it out of Q1 for the first time this year. So there you go. All interesting little bits, I guess. Um, 
there is talk about, obviously, the Red Bull advantage. Now, we thought coming into this race, Red Bull were going to be, we were going to dominate. They didn't. Verstappen's admitted that Red Bull's dominance has completely gone and um, with the RB20 car, and it was not good enough. I do think their, their tyre degradation, once again, looks really, really good. Uh, the only thing that might rain on the parade is the literally the rain that may happen during the race or the overnight rain making the track green making it a lot more abrasive and that can have a big effect on the tire deck and make people you know do two stops three may not even be out of the question so Hamilton, Hamilton yeah I mean Hamilton's going to be happy but Verstappen who is pipped to pole and as he said they're no longer the dominant force they were in 2023 um, asked if this is a wake-up call for Red Bull. He told media, we need to push. We need to bring parts faster and better. We had a very dominant car last year. That is completely gone. Naturally, we just need to really try and make a step ahead again. Verstappen's failure to take pole in Spain comes after what was a troubled series of races, races for Red Bull, with the RB20 struggling over the curbs at both Imola, Monaco and Canada. But two, but two out of those three races, to be fair, the Dutchman won. So, yeah, he's finally getting the competition we want. So if he, you know, unless he completely breezes it, just like Canada, it's an absolute, I mean, all his wins are deserved, but it's an absolutely deserved win where he had to really fight for it. That's where we see him. That's where Max, won, you know, are fighting for a world championship. 2021, it ended controversially, I, you, you know, but he fought to, he fought to the end, didn't he? So if you take away the last race, amazing championship. Um, uh, amazing championship fight and that's what what i personally want to see from max and we haven't really haven't we in 22 we saw a bit of it but not kind of like at the business end of the championship in 23 we didn't really see much of it it was all uh, at all it all looked very easy i'm sure it wasn't that easy from the front but it was easier than 2021 and other years now he's under pressure this is going to be the making of max verstappen um these next couple of years with the cars really really close i'm really looking forward to it and this is where he will he will either etch his name in the greats or not is he going to crumble i don't think he will i don't i don't think he will but it's going to be really interesting to see and i hope the pressure mounts on him more and we really see what max verstappen son of yours is made of so let's get into the individual performances then shall we so here we go on our special spanish grand prix it says insane it says insane races there doesn't it um hopefully there well there we go maybe it's a Maybe it's an omen. Maybe this will be an insane race. So, last. Now, who is... Yeah, have, have a guess. Have a guess who is last. Um, what? Yeah, you're right. If you said if you said Logan Sargent, sadly, you are right. He didn't out-qualify Paris this time. But surprisingly, second to last is this man here, Alexander Albon. What is going on with Williams? The most... I mean, it's good. In a way, it's good that we're saying this is the most disappointing qualifying for Williams so far. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good thing because we expect more of them. I don't know what happened. I've not seen any media, but maybe we'll find out. So, third to last then, and qualifying basically 18th, is this guy right here. Really disappointed. It's uh, Daniel Ricciardo. Um, what happened to the go faster bits, Alpine? Because your teammate, Yuki Sanoda, is right alongside you. Is it a case of they put the go faster bits on, they didn't really understand them, and it's put them back a bit? Bear in mind, the these grids now, just, you know, your car can be off by three, four tenths of a second, and then suddenly that's disaster near, near the back of the grid. That's how close these times are getting now um, in 2024. So, yeah, they, RB definitely need to do something about it, um, for sure. So next up, we have Mr. Magnuson. Qualified 16th. I think they'll be quite happy with that. I think the minute Haas gets out of Q1, that's great for Haas. Bear, bear in mind, we were all we were all thinking that Kevin Magnussen was um, and the Haas team were going to be one of the worst people in Formula One. But alas, um, getting into uh, as he got into Q2, didn't he? Is this gentleman right here is Zhao Guanyu? So a massive congratulations for Zhao. Well done. Really, really happy with you. Yeah, um, I think that's good. I, is it is it going to be enough 
to save his seat? Probably not, but there are rumours he might go to another seat, might go to Haas because of the potential sponsors that he has. So next up, we have... Um, <laughs> yeah, I've just seen... It's uh, this man here qualifying in 14th. Lance Stroll, so out-qualified by Hulkenberg and Bottas. Yeah, people that I wouldn't really, you'd expect, um, in what is, I think, a fairly decent car in the hands of a good driver. Moving on, um, we've got Nico Hulkenberg. And we'll be talking about Lance Stroll and Charles Leclerc in a video either tonight or tomorrow, bearing in mind the uh, road rage incident and the complete lack of penalty. I, yeah, I was very, very cross at that. But here we go. Nico Hulkenberg. Yes, he qualified 13th. Well done. I think that's about as good as he can qualify. Um, he is a really good barometer. I mean, if he can't get that much out of the car, it's it's not going anyway. He often out qualifies Kevin Magnussen. I don't think I don't think you can knock it at all. But even better than his teammate um, is Mercedes' old number two driver, Valtteri Bottas. I mean, he's 12th. And from there, given a half decent pit stop, maybe a tiny bit of luck, points can be scored. I mean, and goodness me, Sauber need the points, don't they? So next up, we've got just outside the top 10, 11th, Fernando Alonso. Disappointed, I think, to not be in the, in the top 10. In his home race, I do think he'll get points. But it's going to be hard, isn't it? You've got the likes of, you've got, wow, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull around that top 10. But albeit Perez qualified 8th. So nine, ten. He's going to rather be, I think, eleventh or twelfth when it when it all um, when it all goes goes around. So this guy here, Oscar Piastri, yep, oh the silly man of qualifying. I mean, he was looking so good. He went wide. He had the you know uh, one shot, as Eminem would say, and yeah, it it went horribly wrong, didn't it? But let's see what he can do for the race because I'm sure he's far, he's faster than the Alpines, isn't he? That's absolutely a given. And talking of the Alpines, ninth for Esteban Ocon. Well done getting in to Q3. Both Alpines getting into Q3. I mean, that was absolute that was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. So alongside him, but not because he's got at that three-place grid penalty for the controversial um decision that Red Bull had at Canada for leaving Perez out when he had a clearly damaged car that, let's be fair, wasn't really going to go any further, was it? But Sergio Perez, yeah, qualifying eighth. I d we can't really um, lambast him for that because he did help Max Verstappen on on his on his hot lap to um, help him establish what was second place. But at no point did he look like challenging Max Verstappen or getting anywhere near him. To be fair, um, so let's hope for a better race than Canada, Perez. Come on, I mean, get it if you get on that podium. That would be amazing. Could he go on the podium? I I, th I think he could. And with the tyre deg that the Red Bull, Red Bull have, and Sergio Perez is known in the past for being a tyre whisperer, whisperer, not so much now, but he's still, I mean, I'm hoping he's still got it. We have a fight back of epic proportions. At the very least, he can get, surely he can get past the Alpines. Speaking of the Alpines, we have Pierre of the Gasly here, qualified in seventh. Well done, Pierre. Well done. Fantastic qualifying. I mean, you could make an argument that that was, you know, other than him and Norris, at the two outstanding people in qualify in qualifying in Spain today. Sainz is next. So Carlos Sainz, I can't help but think I'm disappointed with Ferrari, but I guess somebody had to finish fourth in that in this 14 battle. And uh, yeah, it was Carlos Sainz, just about a qualified by Leclerc. He did look better, I think, in practice. At times, than the than Leclerc, and here we go. Also joining him on that row is Charles Le, Charles Leclerc. Didn't like the road rage in the practice three, but are we going to talk about it um, another day in another video even? But yeah, I'm mean, uh, dis I mean disappointing. Eleven seven, they're not that far off. To be fair, when you look at Hamilton, um, and then you go all the way down to sixth, it's like thirty five hundredths, um, you know, of a second, uh, three hundred, you know. It's just absolutely nothing. It's so close. It's so close. So I don't think they can be that disappointed. Be interesting to see what happens during the race, though. So we've got George Russell finally being out-qualified again for a while 
It's Been a While by Lewis Hamilton, but we're talking the tiniest, the tiniest amounts. Now, with all this controversy going around about keep making Hamilton slow, keeping him slow, sabotaging him, and then suddenly Hamilton out-qualifies him, that's going to that's gonna fuel those conspiracy theorists. I don't think there's a conspiracy. I just think both of them are really, really good drivers. And on this occasion, Hamilton did a better lap. I still feel, though, that... If George Russell may have the edge over one lap on speed of Hamilton now, I don't think over the course of a season he will, he's currently as good in the race. And that's just down to his experience, because I'm sure he can be. I mean, George can be a world champion. He won the F2 title, for example, beating Lando Norris, who's on pole. But well done, Lewis Hamilton. I think anyone in that top six has the potential to win the race. Being third and fourth on that second row, you have the potential to be leading into the first corner. Do it, Lewis. Do it. Uh, you know, um, Norris gets away in the lead, and then it's Verstappen and Hamilton side by side into that corner. And speaking of the Flying Dutchman, yes, second. He's disappointed. He realises that they're, you know, they questioning the car a tiny bit, but then I guess you would when you've been that dominant. It is a potentially frustrating for him. I love it. We've got to fight. I hope he doesn't run away in the race on the tyre deck and it's as close as Canada with, well, even Canada, if you remember, like halfway through, you still didn't know, you still did not know who was going to win. So, that's Verstappen, but man of the hour, man of the day, I think, along, along with Gasly, Lando Norris. What an absolutely perfect lap Fantastic starting on pole. Can he win? Absolutely, he can, I think. It's just going to be interesting. It's the getting through that first corner and that tyre dig. Unfortunately, neither Piastri or Perez are there to help their front row teammates. And the frustrating thing is, both of them have, both, you know, these front row people without their teammates have got both Mercedes right behind them piling on that pressure. So if you like what you, if you like what you see, please, please, I would very much like a subscribe. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you very much for watching. We, I, tr I do try and answer all your comments. I do read all your comments as well. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. As you know, we've reached over 1,000 subscribers about, about a month ago, and it's just fantastic. I really, really enjoy doing this. I just want to say thank you so much. If you subscribe, that would be amazing. If you subscribe and like, you're a multiple world champion in our eyes. Thank you very much, and we'll speak to you soon.